Radio Life with Susan Harp. Hi everyone, I'm Rose Martin and thank you for joining us. Susan's giving us tools and strategies for being our best and living our best life. I can't wait to see what she has in mind for today. Susan, hello. Hi Rose and hello to you. Thanks for joining us and we are talking today about all the things we have to do around the holidays especially. Wow, okay, that's a big one. People are bringing that up to me a lot now, talking about, oh, I can't believe it. I've got to do the cards. I've got to do the cooking. I'm having everybody at my house for Thanksgiving. I've got to get different chairs and, and more tablecloths. All the things that come up during wrapping the gifts, when, when we move on to, to the rest of the holidays in December, all the things that they have to do. And sometimes I get exhausted just hearing the list. Right. I get oh, exhausted making my list. Yeah, exactly. And so what I wonder about is who has created that set of expectations? Hmm. Who, who has told you you have to send out the cards by a certain date? You are the one that should have Thanksgiving. God forbid you should buy something for Thanksgiving. You have to make all of it. Who is the person who has said, these are the expectations and you will do this? Well, let me think about that. You know, part of it is tradition. That that's just the way I've always done it. That's what we've always eaten. That's yeah. what we've always done. Mm -hmm. um, what hmm, if what if you didn't do everything you've always done? What if you did something? It wouldn't different? seem right. It wouldn't seem right. It wouldn't seem right. Like it wouldn't seem right for the meal or for the people. Well, the cards, the cards I have gotten away from a little bit with the cards. But, you know, what was really hard was not going home last year because of COVID. So it all seemed off. Yeah, it because, was off. Because I wasn't, you know, I didn't have my regular everything. Right. I didn't, the food, right. the people, yeah. even the craziness. In a part, I kind of missed it. I yes. kind of missed, you know, being involved in all of that. And yeah. it was different. But who, your question of... Where did it come from to start? I don't know. Sometimes it comes from external forces, external people, media, um, programs. It comes from other than us, people and things other than us. Mm -hmm. So if you don't go to every single party, like in some people's uh, tradition, they have Thanksgiving with a part of their family and then they go to somebody else's house for dessert mm -hmm. or they go to a series of parties around the holidays and it starts with Thanksgiving and it continues mm -hmm. with Christmas and Hanukkah and New Year's. My, my concern is when do you begin to operate out of your own value system and what you believe is important for you versus doing what you think you should do because others have told you so and others make you feel bad if you don't meet their expectations. What okay. if somebody says to you, you know that pumpkin roll you make, I want you to make three of them for Thanksgiving because we're having some extra guests. Right, and maybe I don't like pumpkin roll even to begin or, with. <laughs> what if you don't right. like it or yeah. what if you don't want to make right, it? I don't want to make it. Or yeah. what if you don't have the time for it? Yeah. Do you make it anyway? Yeah, probably. And that's where we get ourselves into mm -hmm. some of the trouble but that I we're in. It, right? You resent it. I resent exactly. it. I'm like, wow, I can't believe I didn't say no to making those three pumpkin Exactly, rolls. exactly. And the, the problem then occurs not only with the fact that you go and do it and you don't want to do it, but you're complaining about it. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm so exhausted. I can't believe I have to do this. I got to get up for work tomorrow morning. I'm going to be up till one o'clock in the morning because I got to make the pumpkin rolls. And then, and we got to go to all these people's houses. And we don't have to do anything. We decide mm -hmm. what it is we're going to do. And then we need to accept what our decision is. What we need to think about are our core values what is meaningful to us. Yes, we all have traditions that mean something to us. Mm -hmm. But when somebody else starts to impose what they want you to do, either by telling you or just you feeling like you have to do it because everybody else is doing it, 
those are the times when we have to say, is this meaningful to me? In our tradition, in my family's tradition, we don't make cookies for Hanukkah. We actually make some cookies for ourselves, but the cooking making, like, mm -hmm. a, like a factory cooking making, which so many people do, is not part of our family's tradition. When I had my very first job, which was many decades ago, I remember going home one night prior to the holidays, and I said to my husband, I gotta get everything to make the cookies. And he said, what cookies? And I said, he said, we have everything to make the, the cookies that we make for Hanukkah, you mean? I said, no, 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 I gotta make a variety. And he said, why do you have to make a variety? I said, I don't know, everybody in the <laughs> office is doing it. I have to do it. I literally believed that because everybody else was doing it, I was gonna feel left out if I mm -hmm. didn't. That does not mean that if you want to absorb somebody else's traditions or you want to think of more things to do or replace some of the things you do. For instance, I love going to a cookie exchange. It's not in my tradition, but I, but I love to get invited to other people's cookie exchanges mm -hmm. because I really like everything about it. That's okay, but to add that on to 50 other things I should do is not gonna happen. So what I ask people to do is think about what's meaningful to you. And then once you make that decision about what those things are, you don't have the right to complain if you're gonna do them. Mm. And right. if you choose to do it, then let it go and do it. You make Do choice. it, that's up yeah. to you, but you don't have the right to complain if you're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to do it, you don't put guilt on yourself because you're not doing the cards this year. That's a tough one because the expectation of what you don't do, then I think you worry about judgment. I didn't do it. What's everyone going to say if I don't show up with sure. this or like they're going to think I'm a slacker that I didn't pull my weight and do the part, you know, but didn't take my turn to, at the meal what I needed to do. So that, how do you do that? How do you deal with that feeling of, well, I just better do it because it's the expectation of what needs to happen? Don't you find that the people who are worried about being a slacker are those that never, ever, ever, ever could describe themselves as such? Yes. And you know, I'm going to laugh at that. I, I'm actually going to laugh at that because that is so, so true. It's the overachiever yeah, who worries about being a slacker. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm a family of overachievers. Yeah. So, that's, so therefore, it, well, therefore what we do instead is we, we take solace in the fact that we are acting out of our own traditions and our value system and things that don't mean the same things to, that they may mean to other people. Maybe for some people it is the cards. For some people it's the, it's the um, visiting, the, the, uh, going to different family family members or friends' houses. For some people, it is hosting Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever holiday you're used to hosting. Traditions are wonderful. That's, a, that's fabulous. I don't want anybody to give up their traditions. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is don't go according to somebody else's plan. And one of the things that has me thinking about this now, besides the holidays coming up, is that there has been a lot in the news lately about Instagram and its impact on... Uh, well, in this case, young girls. Mm -hmm. So there was an article recently in a news story about how some young women were becoming suicidal mm. while looking at these models and mm -hmm. these so-called influencers' pictures of themselves. People who are, who are models, who have so-called perfect bodies, what they think is a perfect face. And, and when normal people were looking at these Instagram accounts, they were feeling less than. And I want to relate that to the notion of not just young women looking at Instagram stories, but the whole idea of looking at the internet and, and, and whether it's Pinterest, whether it's people's blogs, whether it is their Insta stories, we, we have a tendency to measure ourselves against what other people are doing. And when we do that, it is a very slippery slope. Mm. And the fact is, is that it always looks better than it is. People are not going to film themselves on a bad day. Right. 
they're not going to film themselves on a bad hair day, on a bad relationship true, day, true. <laughs> on a true. bad communication day. Mm -hmm. um, I do actually. I have no problem being real, but but some people do. They're mm -hmm. they're afraid to be real, and so they measure themselves against these these statues that aren't real. And so what I say to people is be careful when you start to do that because you will always come up short when you measure yourself against somebody that you deem to be perfect. And you know something? Perfection is, should be a non-word. Mm -hmm. Perfection is never the same for you and everyone else. What you believe to be mm. important is never the same thing as it is others. And it is a slippery slope when you decide to, dis to make your decisions for the holidays or in life according to what other people believe are important. And especially when you start to measure yourselves against people that you don't know, that you see on the internet, and that you believe whose lives are perfect. Not true, never gonna be true. How does that, you know, looking at that burden that that could place on having to get so many things done that you don't feel worthy enough or you're getting so wrapped up into these things you think you should be doing right or you should be um, contributing then how does that translate into you know just the day-to-day -day getting through the day and all of the things we've talked about in other shows with happiness and and you know gratitude and those other things if you're so overwhelmed by external forces or you let yourself be so overwhelmed by external forces for what you should look like, act like, and do. Family pressures for what you need to act like, cook, do, right? And then your own center of, you know, I'm, I'm lost right now. I don't know, because there's so many things happening at one time. I don't even need to, I don't know how to get off go. Mm -hmm. Well, within your question, therein lies the answer. When it's external focused versus internal focused, that's when you know you have the problem. When you are defining what your happiness is gonna be about relative to other people's or what other people seem to find happiness in, that's when you realize that you need to pull back and instead spend some time, whether it's during the holidays, before and after, spend some time thinking about what's important to you. More than ever now, um, with the fact that we are living through this pandemic, life is not fine, not infinite. Uh, life is finite. Mm -hmm. And we owe it to ourselves to be living our most authentic life. We owe it to ourselves to revolve our lives around the, the belief system um, that we create not what somebody else thinks you should do. And it's, it's not only a slippery slope to uh, sometimes depression and unhappiness, but it's meaningless. It becomes meaningless for you. And meaninglessness leads to depression too. So what I want people to do, especially now, as we're grateful, um, as we head into Thanksgiving, and we, we do believe that happiness is a form of gratitude, I do believe that we need to think about the things that we want to be doing. There are no have to's, there really aren't. There are no have to's unless you place that burden on yourself. And if you're reasonable about the things that you want to do that will make you and your family happy during the holidays, then certainly you don't need to adopt everybody else's version mm -hmm. of what that is. It needs to come from within. And when it does come from within, you know that it's, that it's an authentic uh, um, decision. I'm hearing you say that it's okay to say no. It's so very okay to say no. then how do you do that? So you've asked me to make the pumpkin rolls. I'd love to say yes, but I'm going to say no. Yes, I know I did it last year, but I'm not able to do it this year. Without excuses, without justification. Not any excuses. And better yet, that's not what I want to do this year. You can, if anyone's doing any judging, you can judge how authentic you are by the words that you use. Mm. If you say things like, I don't want to do that, or 
I know I did it before and I'm not doing it again. Or yes, it was okay for me last year, but it's not okay now. Or I would love to say yes, but I need to say no. Those are all ways that you're telling yourself it is okay to not do everybody else's expectation. Certainly give up automatically 100% give up what the internet tells you to do okay or what that other gone. influencers That's right. tell you to okay. do or what people on Instagram tell you to do but the people in your life will like would like to tell you what to do also and the fact is and this is uh, we can talk about this more uh, when we talk about assertiveness versus passivity and aggressiveness but we take on different stances in our personality type so for instance there are ways to say no without feeling guilty. There are ways to say no that just takes ownership of you. So for instance, I'm not going to do that. And that's it. And quiet. that's it. Not give a million excuses. Yeah. Because the fact is, is the excuses themselves are meaningless. No, right. you could stay up till four in the morning if you decide right. to do it. And there's always a counter, right? That's there's right. There's always a counter to try. If you, if the more you talk, the more the opening there is for um, debate That's on right. the topic. And right. the person who's debating is the aggressive person. Mm -hmm. If you're being passive, you're the person who's doing too much talking. So in other words, you're, you're giving oh, too good. many reasons. You're, that's good advice. You're yeah. saying, you're saying I, I really want to, but and I would if I didn't have to drive everybody to, to um, the sporting events. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll drive them for you. Well, I'd really do it if I didn't have to make the cookies. Yeah. Well, I, I'll buy the cookies for you. Well, I'd really do it. Yeah. I would do it if I didn't have to uh, make the, the dress for the Christmas pageant. Well, right. I'll go get the Christmas pageant dress for you. Every, the, the aggressive person has an answer for you. Yeah. And, and instead, I've decided not to do that this year. Uh, oh, we got another leaf in your hair. Thank you. Wow. I've decided I'm not going to do that this year. Mm-hmm. And I bet when you do finally get to that point, the sense of internal relief oh, almost is, is de-stressing, almost is a de-stress in itself to where you can really then, like you talked about earlier, enjoy the moments and the moments will be gone if you stress yourself out and make too many lists and never get anything done and then it's over and it was terrible. Exactly, exactly. And too often, that's what mm -hmm. I hear from clients, is I didn't even enjoy it. I was so knotted up with all of the things that I needed to do. And I was thinking about the next thing as I was doing whatever event I was at. That's where you don't want to be. Or how about saying, I'm going to go to yoga instead this week. I'm not going to be making the cookies. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to call a friend who I miss on the telephone. I'm going to spend an hour on the phone instead of writing the cards. You, it's a message that you give yourself as much as you're giving a message to others. So what message would you give to me and to our viewers about maybe three or four things that we can think about to really, to really get through this season of craziness and chaos without it being crazy or chaotic? Number one, Think about, as the season now, it's just beginning to start. We're a little ahead of it now. Think about it now. Think about how do you want to feel at the end of your holiday season? Mm -hmm. And two, what do you need to do in order to get there? Do you need to exercise more? Do you need to make sure that you eat properly and, and not have every dessert that comes your way the whole holiday season? What do you need to do to get there, to get to that feeling that you want to have? And three, what do you not want to do so that at the, at the end of the holiday season you say, I got there. I that, feel the way I want to feel. That's probably the most important list we're going to make, right? There you go. Mm. Susan, <laughs> thank you so much. Another wonderful show with Susan Harp, Real Life with Susan Harp. If you'd like to email Susan, suggest a topic, answer questions. You can find her at real life at blueridgepbs.org. I'm Rose Martin and thank you for joining us to again get these insights about not feeling too overwhelmed in this season or in any part of your life. Until next time, let's all go out there, take her advice and live our best lives. <music>